First, I just want to thank a lot of the people that, uh, friends, family, who don't usually go to church, that they came here today. It means the world to me, and I'm eternally thankful to the Lord for all your presence in my life. So, uh, ever since I could remember, I've always believed in God. More so, I've always believed that Jesus is God. It was kind of like, a, okay, the sky is blue, Jesus is God, that type of thing. Uh, it was cut and dry thing for me when I was a child. I went to Catholic school and church every Sunday. When I was younger, I would always say my prayers every single night. But as I got older, that tend to that tended to kind of decrease as time went on. I always knew for I always knew about Christ's sacrifice. I always knew of it, but I didn't really know what it meant for me. Uh, when I was about 17, I started doubting my faith, and that led me to questioning a lot of things. And one of the biggest mistakes I did was not searching scripture for those answers. I went online, I basically typed in proof of God, and obviously you know how the internet is. There was a lot of results that did not help, but only helped to stress me out. That was about it. Yeah, it was, um, so I was, obviously I didn't like the results I got, so I kind of strayed away from seeking the Lord for about seven to eight years. And in those seven to eight years, my life changed drastically in some good ways, but in some bad. When I was around 17, 18 years old, I developed very serious depression about December of my senior year, and that kind of froze me up for a long time. I gained a ton of weight. I wasn't sure what was going on with my life. I didn't know who I was. I started to doubt even if I wanted to continue on living, and that was very, that was very difficult. Um, 2019 uh, came around. I started to lose some of that weight. Um, I didn't do it in a healthy way. I basically starved myself, and unfortunately, I developed an eating disorder. That eating disorder was uh, bulimia. And around that same year, unfortunately, uh, my dad passed away. So all of these different things attacking me at the same time, I didn't know what was going on. And, and at the same time, as I was growing up, I didn't deal with bullying per se, but there was a negative perception about myself for a long time that really affected me. And unfortunately, to couple up with that, uh, I was very angry and resentful of all, a lot of those people who were you know, disrespectful of, to me in that way. And I held a grudge, which I now know was very, very unhealthy and hurting me more than anything else. As time went on, as I started to lose the weight um, more and more, I found bodybuilding. I was able to kind of push myself in a healthy way to strive to be better. I met a lot of great friends along the way there. Um, I began bodybuilding, I want to say 2021. And it looked like I was starting to become a lot better, but mentally I was still stuck in that mind frame where I was taking my anger out on a lot of those people during you know, a lot of my sets, working out and stuff like that, but I was, I was carrying a lot of that rage and I wasn't letting it dissipate. It was building up, even small things, small little you know, interactions, they would continue to build up. And I was, as I was living, I found no peace. There was moments in a few days where I was able to, you know, kind of take rest for a little bit, but I was getting no constant peace, no constant reflection on my life. I was, I was in agony 24-7 mentally. It was pain. It was it's something I can't really describe verbally. It was an experience that I, I continued to keep doubting myself. It was like intrusive thoughts telling me the worst about myself. I knew I couldn't do it alone. I couldn't find peace alone. I couldn't find forgiveness for other people alone. And I couldn't forgive myself either. My mind was always racing. I was never at peace. Again, there was days where there'd be, it would be easier, but there was always a battle. Constantly, I was always at war with my mind, but the way I was perceived, the way I perceived myself, and others' perceptions of me. It was like hell on earth. About two months ago, that's when it really started to take hold of me again, and I knew that I needed help, not humanly help. I knew I knew the Lord. I still believed all these years, but I realized that I had to, I had to submit to him, that he was the only way out. I got down on my knees one night, and I, I asked the Lord for his will to be done, not mine. I didn't remember much about the Bible or Scripture, but I remembered, especially when Christ was praying in the garden before he obviously died for all of our sins, before he gave that great sacrifice that was his life, he asked three times to the Lord if that cup could be passed from him. And every all those three times, the answer was very clear. Christ had to make that sacrifice, and he prayed, Lord, let your will be done, not mine. And that, it stuck in my mind. So when I asked him, when I asked the Lord, I got down on my knees and I asked, Lord, let your will be done, not mine. 
I could see things in my life starting to change. A lot of that anger within days was gone. I started to read scripture. I started to understand God's word instead of looking online for other people's opinions. And slowly but surely, he, char- he started to reframe my mind. He started to change my heart. And instead of walking around being angry at certain people, I was filled with love for all people. doesn't matter what you've done to me. I forgive you because the Lord forgave me for the countless amount of sins I committed against him. And as I was beginning my journey with the Lord, I knew one thing I needed, and that was community in Christ. So one of the first things I did was pray. I was like, Lord, please, I need community. I need that above all things. And I had a lot of great friends. I reached out to one of my closest friends, TJ. He's sitting right there. And um, I remember I texted him. I was like, hey, if you're free today, can we talk about Jesus? And he responded in all caps, we can always talk about Jesus. And that was was, was a lifeline to to me. I started going to um, church a little bit, and I realized I needed something a little bit deeper. Three days after I, uh, I gave my life to Christ, I was sitting in the conference room of my internship, and I was, um, I was just praying. I was like, Lord, please, I really need some community. I really need some kinship in Christ. And usually at my internship, I would get up and clean, sometimes a half hour later than I planned to. That's, but I remember I was sitting there, and I felt the Spirit tell me. That was one of those days where I was like, oh, I'll clean in a half hour. And then in a half hour, I'd say, oh, I'll get up and clean in a half hour. But I felt the Spirit tell me, get up and clean right now, right now. So I go into the area where there's a couple squat racks, and I see a bar loaded up. I was like, oh, someone probably just forgot to unrack it. So I go in there, I take the plates off, and the gentleman comes through. Hey, sorry, I was still, uh, I was still working on that. I was like, oh, it's all right. I help him put the weight back in. And as I'm leaving, I turn, I pivot on my right foot, and I say, oh, by the way, what do you do for work? And he responds, oh, I'm a pastor. That man was Jacob, and ever since then, we've been, we've been meeting every Tuesday to go over scripture, any questions I might have, and I remember the first day I came to Sacred City, I knew this is where the Lord wanted me to be. And ever since then, it was about three months ago since I gave my life to Christ, and all those problems that I had been trying so hard on my own to rip away from myself and to overcome, it was gone almost instantly. Now, there's a lot of things, especially when you come to the Lord, there's a lot of things that doesn't go away right away. And the process of sanctification is a lifelong process. It's not going to be momentarily where those sins or those issues that you've been holding on to are gone. Some go quickly, some they kind of linger for a little bit. But the beautiful thing about that is there's repentance for that, there's grace for that, and the Lord will carry you through it like he did me and like he has done to so many others. I can honestly say coming to Christ was easily the greatest decision of my life. I have a peace now, a constant peace that I have strived for for my entire life that I could not find on my own. And the Lord Jesus granted that to me the second I came to him. I'm beyond grateful for everyone in my life. I'm beyond grateful for the church. I've truly found where I need to be in life, and I'm beyond grateful for all of it. I'm, sometimes I fall short of words. Um, I'm just beyond grateful. And if there's anything I could, any little bit of wisdom, I'm only 24, I don't have a lot of wisdom. I'm very young. But one thing I would say, regardless of what anyone has ever done to you in your life, forgive them. There's been a lot of times where people have wronged me or wronged people that I love, and I've, I've held that grudge for a long time, but the greatest thing that you can do is forgive them. Maybe not for them, but for you. But truly see, search within your heart and find ways to love them because we are all human beings. Christ didn't just die for me. He died for all of you. He didn't, didn't just die for the people in this church. He died for everyone around the world because he loves us. God truly so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So whoever believeth on him may inherit eternal life. God bless you all. And I hope that the Lord continues or begins to work in your lives. God bless.